Hey everyone, welcome back to Be The Hope. Here we are the fifth Sunday of Easter, also celebrating Mother's Day. So I hope that all of you have been able to wish all of your biological and spiritual mothers a happy Mother's Day. I know my mom wishes that uh, my sister and I could be with her, but due to the stay-at-home orders and us just being adults, uh, we haven't been able to be home, but hopefully we will be able to celebrate soon. So uh, I hope that you've had that time to just extend your thanks and gratitude to them. Today, I do want to focus on Mother's Day, but I want to focus on the Queen of Heaven and Earth. I want to focus on Mother Mary. Uh, just sharing a little bit about my story, I was spent eight or nine years away from the Catholic Church. Uh, a lot of Protestant denominations and, and heavily preaching and doing all of those things. And then I decided to come back to the Catholic Church. Well, God decided to bring me back to the Catholic Church. And along with that, I had a great struggle with Mary. I never really understood why she was important in the life of the church, and I never understood why we needed her in our life. Uh, it wasn't until after I made a consecration to Jesus through Mary, uh, St. Louis de Montfort's uh, total consecration, that Mary and I started becoming like BFFs. And I'm not joking, like I carry a rosary in my pocket every day. I'm always just looking for ways to live more like our Blessed Mother. Because you see... Mary is the perfect role model of what it means to be feminine, uh, but also what does it mean to live life to the fullest? And, and I mentioned the femininity because like St. Joseph also represents what does it mean for men to be masculine, right? And to live that out in the Catholic Christian sense, right? What does it truly mean for us to live masculinity and femininity out in today's culture and for us to live as we were created to be as male and female? But you see, Women are called to be receivers, but we're also called to give life. Uh, and Mother Mary it just illustrates this so beautifully, right? She receives the grace and protection of St. Joseph. And, Saint, and men are called to, to live out that role of being a protector, right? And a leader and a guider. And so St. Joseph provides that protection over Mary, right? And she receives that with grace and with gratitude so that she's able then to give life to Jesus the Son. So she gives life to, to the Son of God because she lives out the, this beautiful gift of femininity so perfectly. And we know that Mary is fully creature, right? She's not divine. She's just like you and I, other than she was set apart and she was free from sin so that she was able to truly be a vessel of the Holy Spirit to give birth to Jesus, to give life to Jesus in his fleshy body, but also to give life to all of us. Because by her saying yes, and her being that receiver and that life giver, we now have life eternal because she gave birth to Jesus. And so Mother Mary truly is like the mother of us all. You know, Jesus is hanging on the cross. He looks at John, the beloved disciple, and he says, behold your mother. And at that moment, John is representing the entire church, like he's re representing the entire church at that time, but all of us now. And he's saying to him, look, here's your mother. Receive her so that she may help give you life, that she may nurture you and protect you and love you as any other mother would. And then she turns to, to he turns to, to, to Mary and he says, woman, now that word woman alone has a lot of theological context to it. I mean, even dating back to Genesis, but we'll save that for another time. But he says, woman, behold your son. And, and she, he gives Mary the church. Mary truly is this, this beautiful image of what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to truly follow Jesus, Right? She's the perfect role model of what does it mean to follow Jesus. In the church, we have what are called four Marian dogmas, and we celebrate these feast days throughout the year. We have Mary as the mother of God, also known as the Theotokos, which we celebrate on January 1st every year. We celebrate her glorious assumption, her immaculate conception, and her perpetual virginity. Those are the four Marian dogmas, meaning like these are concrete. They've been revealed by a divine revelation. Like no questions asked. This is what the church believes. But then there's something else called the fifth Marian dogma. Now, or the fifth Marian doctrine. I'm sorry. It hasn't been a dogma yet. This is the fifth Marian doctrine, 
within this doctrine, this is probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite in describing who Mary is. But the fifth doctrine is Mary as a spiritual mother. And it focuses on her being the co-redemptrix, meaning she participates in redemption. Jesus wins redemption for all. Like he truly was the one that, that wins redemption for all. But Mary, because she was his mother and free from sin, and her eyes are so focused on Jesus and doing what he wants, she participates in redemption right along with him. We hear that, that her heart is pierced with a spiritual sword when he dies, right? Like even her heart is pierced with a lance. That is how closely united they are. It is so beautiful. She's also the mediatrix of all graces. So the graces that Jesus won on the cross, Mary is there to help guide where those graces go. She's there to say, hey, Jesus, that person over there in Tanzania needs that grace. Or that person over there in, in Mongolia needs that grace, right? Or that person in Fostoria, Ohio needs that grace. Because mothers know best, right? <laughs> Mother Mary knows her children. Jesus knows them intimately, personally, but Mother Mary also knows us. And she's willing to help give us the graces that we need, should we ask for her intercession. And that leads to the third part of this Marian doctrine, is that she's the advocate. She's fighting for us. She's willing to intercede for us, right? St. Louis de Montfort has this beautiful image that when we pray to Jesus, right, as sinful, broken people, right, it's like we present him with this platter that's, that's kind of tattered, right? It's like old and dirty rags, right? Not very presentable. But when we ask for Mary's intercession, she takes our mess and she cleans it up and puts it on this beautiful gold platter and she hands it to her son. She makes it more presentable to Jesus. She doesn't, she doesn't take the glory for herself. She merely helps prepare it to present it to Jesus so that it may have the fullness of the grace that it deserves. And like I said, that's probably my favorite <laughs> description of Mary is just her being a spiritual mother. So today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, maybe we use this time to reflect on Mother Mary. We reflect on how she's a mother to all of us. And if you don't have a strong devotion to her, maybe today is the time to ask Jesus to open your door to that and allow her to transform your heart and soften your heart. Because she has one goal in mind. And that goal is to get all of us to love her son, to love his heart. Her goal is to get us into the sacred heart of her son because that's where our home is at. She will guide us. She will take us by the hand. She will guide us. She will wipe away our tears. She will be a mother to us. And so maybe today as a challenge for you is to invite her as your spiritual mother, as the perfect spiritual mother that she is. And for us women, maybe we call her upon her to guide us in what does it mean to be truly feminine and live it out in today's life. And for all you men, I encourage you to turn to St. Joseph to, to look at what does it mean to be masculine in this world and to live that out uh, as we are called to be man and male and female to proclaim the gospel. So it's just some points to ponder today on this Mother's Day. Know that Mother Mary is leading and guiding you. Know that I'm praying for you and I pray that, that the Lord just richly blesses you this week. Uh, and I, I hope that you're all able to just revel in the gratitude of our mothers today. God bless.